What I'm interested to know is whether we can take a custom-built drone like this Shandrone Squirt V2. It's kind of the king of all cine whoops, the OG thing, which still gets used really for a lot of commercial work, including my own commercial work. Um, and whether a pre-built, ready-to-go cine whoop like this is as good, better, similar, or you know, if there's anything on here that is is an improvement. So first, let me explain why the Shandrone Squirt is so good currently. It's always been a good frame, it's always been a good form factor, um, it's not always flown well, you've often had to tune this in the past, but there's a newer version where the um, ducts have been shrunk down, it's the slammed squirt, um, and basically by shrinking these ducts you get a lot better flight characteristics. In fact, I've been able to fly this on stock PIDs and it's flown really pretty well. Um, the other thing that has changed in recent times is the propellers. By adding extra blades like this, I find it a lot more controllable and it's a lot quieter as well. So that makes a massive difference, adding those propellers. Those are HQ props. They are six blade propellers. I'll put exactly what they are on the screen or in the description in case you're interested. But if you've got a cine whoop and you're interested in just making it better, making it quieter and making it perform better, definitely think about the props and go with either six or eight blade props because they're way better. And this thing, I've dived it down disused elevator shafts, flown it around a famous band, I've flown it in a disused gunpowder mill um, around some ballet dancers. I've, you know, I've put it in all kinds of weird and interesting places. That's what's so good about it. It's the smallest thing really that can carry a full-size GoPro. I use the Hero 9, probably upgrade to the 10 soon, and that's a big camera, but this will carry it and it's safe around people. So what? how could we improve on it? I'll show you some interesting things that HGLRC have done, and I'll let you know whether I think this is as good or better. This is the Veyron 30, and there's a clever little bit of design here where they've put some foam around the prop guards, and this foam is actually removable. So if you want better flight characteristics, you can take it out and they've got these big gaps here to allow for more airflow. So if you find that it's not flying well with this foam, you can remove that. Or if you need it to be really safe, you can just put the foam in and it'll be a lot safer around people. So with that in mind, I actually took the foam off because I saw a few other reviewers and they were all taking the foam off and they said, yeah, just fly it without the foam. I did that, crashed it and the plastic here did break. So I've actually glued that up and it's been rock solid ever since I glued it. But obviously it's not ideal having to glue that up. So I put the foam back on and thought, you know, maybe it'll be more durable like that. And it is, I've crashed it a few times since, it's been absolutely fine. And the flight characteristics are still really good. So um, just leave the foam on if you get one of these. The problem I had when I crashed it was that this was an analog um, drone. And the thing is, <sighs> It sounds kind of snobby. I just love flying digital. Woo, look at that detail. Woo oh, this is just beautiful. And I don't know how you analog guys do it anymore. Ever since I switched to digital, it's just such a clear view. You can see everything. And when I flew this on analog, a little branch came up that I didn't see. I whacked it and crashed and broke the frame. And that was literally because I couldn't see the twig, which I definitely would have seen with digital. The thing is with uh, product review um, copies at the moment is 
you can't really get digital ones because um, digital stuff's really hard to get hold of. So I got the analog version and I liked it so much that I actually converted this to digital. So I took the top plate off, you know, put the Cadex Vista in there and it's excellent now. It's really, really good. I'll put some flight footage on the screen so you can see some of the shots I've been getting with this. I just took it out and flew it around a nice little tree spot for a test. I've crashed it a few times. I also flew it around uh, an abandoned building through some tight window spaces. I've flown it around my house, around my garden. Um, you know, I've really given it a good test. And I would say, compared to the custom-built Chandrone Squirt, very similar. Very similar, and there's even some things that I prefer about the Veyron 30. I'm not sure whether it will become my number one go-to Cine Whoop, but I'm definitely going to be taking it with me on commercial shoots. And over time, I may transition and just use this all the time. This one has some gem fan propellers on it, which are just five blade propellers, not six blade, but those props are way wider. So it's kind of similar in that regard because even though there's one less blade, they are wider. I'd say this is a touch louder, um, but the performance is decent. And they've actually put some pancake style motors on here, which is really interesting. Um, traditionally motors on Cine Whoops have been these kind of small form factor motors which weren't originally designed for Cine Whoops. These, from what I understand, you get a much better torque with. There's a USB-C connector, that's great, it's really easy to access, so if you do need to plug it into Betaflight, change anything around, that is very easy. So there's some nice little design things um, that come on this, and some really good attention to detail, like they've got an LED on the back, which um, sort of rolls left and right like Knight Rider. It looks really, really cool. So I don't know if you've ever done Cine Whoop chasing, but that is a really fun thing to do because these are really slow and controllable and kind of predictable. Try chasing your mate's Cine Whoop with yours. And when you get that kind of shot with the LEDs on the back, this thing is gonna look super, super cool. I would highly recommend this. If you can go with the digital version, that's more of a debate of digital versus analog. You know, it's still flyable with analog, um, you know, less latency, I suppose, as well. But I just like to be able to see what I'm doing. So this thing, really, really good. I'll put some footage on the screen so you can see some shots that I got with it. So there you go. Interesting that in 2021, we're able to get a pre-built Cine Whoop that is very similar and in some ways even better than a custom-built Cine Whoop. Um, I still think the Chandron Squirt is the king of all Cine Whoops. But we are getting some contenders and, uh, you know, for not this thing's not for everybody because maybe you don't know how to solder, maybe you can't get hold of the frame or you don't want to do everything custom, you just want to get the thing ready to go. Then definitely check out the Veyron 30 by HGLRC. There'll be a link in the description. If you use that link, it will support me. You won't pay any more, but it's a good way to support this channel and I would thoroughly appreciate it. So there you go, an update on Cine Whoops for 2021. The big differences are the propellers, we're using more blades. The ducts, everyone seems to agree that they are horrible for performance and there's different ways, whether it's shorter duct or removable foam or whatever, people are trying to kind of come up with a good compromise between safety and flight performance. If at this point you still don't know what a Cine Whoop is, I have a video which is called What is a Cine Whoop? Check that out and thanks for watching. See you next time.